Okay, so this is going to be some background information. The reason why I want you guys to know the background information, because I think it's very important for you to understand why I felt that I was in a desperate situation and I needed to do what I needed to do. Um, growing up in North New Jersey, Brick City, you I don't want to say I had the typical, typical childhood because I don't know what the childhood is of everybody, but I know that I had a struggle and I had a fight. And I busted my butt to not succumb to my circumstances. And I, f I really feel like I was successful. But I want people to understand the type of childhood that I had in order for them to understand my thinking and why I did what I did. Um, some early childhood memories of me um, was one, I was two years old. Now, I'm, people say they don't believe in Zodiac. I believe in Zodiac. I'm a Capricorn, so you already know I'm a natural-born leader. So, when I was two years old, my father was doing his, whatever he was doing. I'm not sure of the details of it, but I told him, I was like, you're not a man, you're a boy. He said, what? I said, I said, you're not a man, you're a boy. So, then he smacked the taste out of me <laughs> for telling him that he wasn't a man. But in my thinking how I am now, it's just like I know that I saw his behavior and how he was acting and treating my mom. And I had to let him know that he wasn't a man. He was a boy. Um, uh, Another thing, me and my sister, me and my sister, we are 11 months apart. And we were looking out the window. I grew up in Seth Borton. Seth Borton is one of the most dangerous projects in the 80s in Newark. It was in the 90s as well. Until they knocked them down. Seth Warren is one of the most dangerous projects. The roughest part of North New Jersey. And me and my sister were looking out the window. And I had a little sister who's two years younger than us. She wanted to look out the window. She's three years younger than her, two years younger than me. And we didn't want her because it's a small window. So she told on us and we got a beating for looking out the window. And as a kid, I just knew... Hey, I'm getting a beating. You know, the wooden brushes. Every time I see a wooden brush, to this day, my ass still hurt. And as a kid, I didn't understand why I was getting a beating for looking out the window. Growing up, understanding that they didn't have the, the parenting skills needed to convey to us that they were scared of bullets because a bullet don't have a name on it and people be shooting. And if you're playing in the window, you could possibly get shot. So they didn't want unalived. They didn't want that to happen to us. So as a kid, I couldn't look out the window. Literally, as a, I, you know, I'm a comedian as well. So I tell my jokes about how I, I dug bullets as a kid, literally. Um, and my childhood was very, very hard. Understand, you know, you got beat for looking out the window. As a kid, you don't know that you did anything wrong. I couldn't go outside and watch the kids play. So we couldn't go outside. And you know how you play with kids? No, we was watching from the window. And, like, it was just a rough childhood. You know, I was homeless. I lived from place to place to place to place. Um, lived in a shelter, lived in a car. And I just knew I never felt right in the situation. I always felt like it was more to life. And I remember people saying, all you have to do is go to school, get an education, and... You can live the American dream. That was what always told me. If you don't like this environment, we tell the kids that now. Get your head out of Don't join the gangs. You know, go to school, get your education, and you won't be in these similar circumstances. And I believe that talk. And I was told you could do anything you put your mind to. And because I believe those talks, I believe that wholeheartedly. So I did that. And I remember, you know, the different circumstances we was in. I was always... My mother always gave me a lot of responsibility. At 12, 13, I was going, you know where the path mark is. Well, if you're from North, you know, it's a path mark on Bergen, um, Bergen Avenue. And um, to South Orange Avenue and um, Huntington Street is where I lived. And I would walk to the path mark, go grocery shopping for my whole house, 13, 12, 13 years old. In addition to doing that, I would do laundry for the whole house. I would pay the bill. My mother would give me the money. I would go pay the rent. I would go pay. I was 12, 13 years old doing this. So I've always been responsible. Um, and I always knew me seeing the situation, her with a lot of kids. I was like, okay, I didn't want kids until I was able to take care of them. I made certain strategic decisions in my life 
to ensure that I won't end up in a certain situation. I looked at other people's mistakes. I looked at other people's life choices, whether it's a mistake for them or not. It's just the things that they chose to do. And I said, you know, I didn't want that for me. I didn't want to be in certain situations. So in order for me to avoid those situations, I had to do certain things to avoid those situations. So I never saw marijuana. People make fun of me because I'm from North, the worst part of North. My father died in prison when I was 16. Um, My father and his three brothers were drug addicts. And they died literally 93, 94, 95. My father was the last one to die in 96. Because um, they all had AIDS and they all was getting high together. So I made a conscious I'm never going to see marijuana. To this day, it's legal. I've never personally seen it. I'm not bougie. I don't think I'm better than anybody. That's just my personal choice. Alcohol. I don't drink alcohol at all. I've never taken a drink of alcohol in my life. I've never had a drink um, to this day. At my wedding, I had Sprite because... I don't drink. So um, that's just another personal choice that I had. So again, strategically, I just did certain decisions that I wanted to make. And I think it's an important you understand my life decisions because you have to understand how I fought so hard to get to where I needed to be. When I graduated high school, I was in the bottom 25% of my graduating class. That is out of the kids that was graduating, 75% of them did better than me. I'm not ashamed of that at all because facts are facts. Um, I struggled with reading. I I don't even want to say I struggled with math. Math is not my thing. Um, And it took me six years to get a four-year degree. It took me six years because I had to go to a county college first. You know, they don't take your credits. I had to go part-time. I was homeless. I had to drop out for a period of time. So I just busted my butt. Um rent in the room in somebody's house making sure and making sure that I was able to go to school to get a degree because you said if you go to school to get a degree you'd be able to provide a life for yourself and I did those things I lived I moved on campus when I was 21 years old and everybody was 18 years old or people were my age were graduating and I was a freshman and I did it in three years because I took some credits from my undergraduate, but I busted my butt to, to graduate from school. Out of five kids, I was the first one to go to college. I bust my butt to, to make sure that I was provide for my family if I ever decided that I have a family. And for me to come from where I came from, a lot of the details I wrote about in my book, my childhood was so rough. It was so hard. And again, living in the shelters, just being, just being the fact that, okay, I don't know if you guys saw the movie Hurricane, but in the movie Hurricane, he says the line, the the best thing he could say about his childhood is that he survived it. And I actually survived it. And I didn't just survive my childhood, I was thriving. The, my, You know, with being a, a father dying of AIDS, who was a drug addict, um, single parent household, you know, the income, the statistics, the crime, not seeing, making sure I did, I wanted to be FBI. So making sure I did strategic things in order to ensure that I would have a life in law enforcement. And I took that seriously. I I believe what it's saying, if you wanted to, if you see the system, you see the issues in the system, all you have to do is become a part of it and and make those changes. Be the change you want to see. Yes, the criminal justice system is not perfect. So join us be a part of us and then you can change it and then you could be the one making a difference and I believe that and that's where I think all of this really came to a head because that wasn't necessarily the case they wanted me to believe that but that's not how they wanted things to actually be so I'm going to go and start with part two